Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome back to another Flash episode review. My thoughts on tonight's episode of Flash titled The Runaway Dinosaur. And honestly, this was an episode... Okay, so this was an episode that I've actually been really looking forward to ever because, you know, Kevin Smith, who directed films like Clerks, Dogma, um, what else, Chasing Amy. Like, Kevin Smith, he's, he's a big comic book fan. Like, he's been, he's been a big DC fan for years. Um, he actually wrote a script for, like, that Tim Burton Superman movie that was almost made. But anyway, so he he um he came in to direct this episode of The Flash, and it was announced like months ago that he was gonna do it. And I've been curious because you know Kevin Smith is a very particular kind of filmmaker. He, like he makes more like raw, more like more dirty kind of films. So when they announced him coming onto the show, I mean like as a fan, I was excited because I know how he feels about humble characters in general. So he, I know he would treat them with respect. But at the same time, I was like, oh like like what can he bring to The Flash? And this episode was honestly was like one of the most emotional episodes, one of the most well-performed episodes of the season. It wasn't action packed or anything, but you know, Kevin Smith did an amazing job in this episode. This is honestly the best directing I've seen of his in like years. And the last movie of his, a movie, a movie of his that I actually liked was Clerks 2. And even then there were some problems with that movie and that was like 10 years ago. Um, but the, he, he directed the hell out of this episode. It was great and amazing. And of course he threw in the little cameo of Jason Mewes. And if, if you know who Jason, or if you know Kevin Smith movies, you know that Jason Mewes, he play, he's um, part of Jay and Silent Bob, and that's where they got big, was because Jason Mewes plays Jay, and Kevin Smith plays Silent Bob, so that's where, you know, their friendship and, and, and their role in movies came from was because of uh, Kevin Smith being an independent filmmaker, making Clerks, so, um, yeah, I loved the, what he did with this episode, it was just so emotional, and, and I, 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 again, I didn't really know what to expect, I mean, I, I wanted this episode to be good, and... <laughs> With the misleading title, I thought there's gonna be some sort of like dinosaur or human kind of thing running around. But the title had a little more emotional depth to it because you know the runaway dinosaur was you know it was the the book that you know Barry and, and his mom read about the whole like the mom of the T Rex and all that stuff. So this episode again, it was just, it was beautifully shot, beautifully performed by everyone involved. Um, the only real problems I had with the episode itself were just with the, there there were really minor things. But bringing Girder back as like as like a zombie metahuman kind of thing, we really could have gone without it. We really we, we we really don't need villains of the week, you know. And two seasons into the show, it's getting really old. Um, I understand he's an old villain, so not bringing in like another new random metahuman. But at the same time, it's just like come on, like as fans, we're getting tired of the villain of the week. So besides that, and the only other thing I felt was really just off to me. Was that last scene in the episode when the show, you, you know, um, Hunter Zolomon, he's keeping Caitlin hostage still, and they're, you know, of course they're in the CCPD, and he's like giving her the choice. He's like, oh, we've, we've gone over this gone so many times already. It's your choice. It's just, Zoom is, as a character, okay, the, the, the Zoom part of the character is still terrifying. Hunter Zolomon is really not the best villain. He's really just, eh. I mean, I mean, like, as Zoom, he's still terrifying, like, especially after what he did in the last episode, but just that bit of the episode, I really, I, I honestly, I could have gone. So, um, but to get into everything else that I enjoyed about this episode, obviously, I loved how this episode picked up right where we left off from last week's episode, I thought that was great, because we don't see too many TV shows doing that anymore, because everything has to be, like, it, 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 everything has to kind of play in real time, but it was nice seeing that, and seeing, like, everyone's still there, between Henry and everyone. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, this is this was something else that kind of bothered me that they kind of glossed over. I mean, obviously, it's, it's not going to be glossed over, like, eventually, but, you know, when last week's episode ended, we saw Wally and Jesse get hit by the energy wave from when Barry first, like, exploded, and they were both affected by it, and Wally, like, immediately was, like, over it, and then Jesse, by the, she was, like, almost, like, in a coma throughout the entire episode, so... As a fan, I, I, especially after last week, I was like, oh, does, like, this, this means they're getting, they, they get their powers. In this episode, like, it was like, wasn't even an issue. I mean, yeah, we, we saw Joe try to, like, you know, tease, almost tease Wally by hit, like, testing to see if he is a metahuman. But, um, so far, he's not, but more than likely he is, because, you know, they wouldn't have gone through all that time of setting up that they could potentially get their powers if they're not going to, you, you know, like, follow through with it, you know? So, um, that was just something I wanted to bring up. But, um, again, one... 
one of my favorite things about this episode in particular was seeing the dynamic between Iris and Cisco because that's really been a dynamic on the show that they haven't really explored because for the most part of the season they really kept Iris on the side and I mean they, they slowly brought her in which I'm, I'm loving her as, as part of Team Flash I, honestly I think Iris is a better fit in Team Flash than Caitlyn and Caitlyn is just a character that the writers really don't know what to do with her so now they're like that's why they're, they've are like trapped her with Zoom because it's like oh well really, besides making her kill her Frost we don't know what to do with her so they're keeping her on the side, which, which sucks for D Danielle Panabaker because I would want more, them to do more with her character, but Caitlyn is just, they've kind of written her into a point where it's like, well, she's not Killer Frost, so there's not much else that they can do with her. Um, but seeing Iris and how she felt so well in this episode, and Candace Patton, this is like one of my favorite episodes of her so far, just seeing how far she is willing to go to protect Barry, and by the end of the episode, just seeing her, her scenes with Barry, I mean, ultimately, like, they didn't really like, end up together as much as I would have wanted them to, but just, uh, Candace Patton is an amazing actress, and the way she handled herself in this episode was so, so confident, and she's willing to put herself out there to protect the team, and to lure in Gerder, that's a strong character, and it's not like her, her just being a damsel in distress, like I already see it's like some idiot's writing. Iris West is honestly one of my favorite characters in this show, and Candace Patton is the big part of that, because she's an amazing actress, and especially in this episode, which has given such great stuff to work with, it was one of my favorite, favorite, favorite performances of her, so that was, again, one of the highlights of the episode for me. Um, and another awesome thing about this episode was seeing Barry in the Speed Force, you know, experiencing all this, these different aspects of his life in the Speed Force, talking to Barry, and manifesting themselves as people in Barry's life, whether it's Joe or Henry or Iris, and even the most powerful one being Barry's mom, because it's something that they face in this episode that they really haven't brought up since the beginning of the season, is, you know, Barry's, you know, like, how is he really affected by his mom's death? Like, has he really accepted it? And I've gone in the past about why, when it comes to Barry's mom's death and his whole situation with that, how I've connected so much with it is because I myself, have, like, my, my mom passed away, so when Barry is experiencing all those emotions and when he's interacting with his mom, that's really, like, emotional for me because I've lost my mom, because I can, I can connect with him on that emotional level, and seeing it, it, it makes me tear up every time they have, like, a support sort of scene like that, and it's just, it's another thing about Grant Gus's performance as, as Barry Allen that makes me just love everything he does about it, you know? It's just, it's just so emotionally just powerful, and I, I love every aspect of it, so there's that. Um, what else? Um, another thing I liked was, you know, Barry's dad, once he finally gets free from the Speed Force, after the awesome scene of Iris pulling Barry out of the Speed Force, that was incredible. Showing, like, almost definitively, definitively despite other fanboys or stupid fanboys who don't like Iris or other fangirls who don't like Iris and only want I only want Barry to end up with Caitlyn for some stupid reason. West Allen is canon. West Allen's gonna happen. I'm so happy for it. Like, and that scene was so beautifully shot too when they when when they grab each other's hand and they, she, Iris pulls Barry out of the Speed Force. That was an incredibly shot scene. Again, props to Kevin Smith for creating such an emotionally powerful, it's beautiful scene. Um, so I loved seeing that. Um, and, and, and going back to what I was trying to mention about with Harry, Henry Allen and seeing him finally decide, you know, like I made the mistake before of leaving you because I, I wanted to be the Flash, but now you know I'm staying. You're not, I'm not going anywhere. I hope that doesn't mean that they're going to kill off his dad, but at the same time, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy his dad's back around because John Wesley, Wesley Ship obviously is a great addition to the show because he played the Flash in the past, and I, I love them including him in the show, especially as, uh, as Barry Allen's dad. So I, I like the fact that he's, his character decided to stay on finally. But um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I think that's it in this episode. I mean, I mentioned pretty much everything I loved and didn't like. This was an amazing episode, and again, not, not too action-packed, but it was just really emotional and beautifully shot, and West Allen, that's, <laughs> that was the whole episode for me. I mean, I was kind of mad when they, they, they copped out and they just, like, hugged at the end, they got, like, a little cheek kiss, but Barry and Iris are getting together, and I'm excited for that, I'm, like, yeah. And there's only two episodes left in the season, holy crap, this season honestly flew by so quick, and while it's not quite as good as first season, it's, it's still, it's still a pretty good season so far. Um, I would say, I'd say it's, it's a really good season. Um, there's been some filler episodes that really weren't really necessary, and I didn't, didn't like the whole Patty Spivet thing, and Zoom's been kind of hit or miss for the last number of episodes. 
well, I mean, like, Hunter Solomon, anyway. But, um, so, yeah, that's gonna be it for me. So, if you guys like what you see here, go ahead and hit subscribe below. Obviously, I review Flash on Tuesdays. I also review Legend of Tomorrow on Thursdays. Um, I just did my spo spoiler-free review for the, uh, new Captain America Civil War movie. That's up on my channel. I did an unboxing for the new Legion of Collectors box from Funko. I have a couple of them right there, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Where they actually, you know, I, I might as well pull it out. Where it came, um, this is a bit of a spoiler for you guys. It came with the uh, the Jay Garrick pop figure, which is from, from Funko, which is a it's, it's it's an amazing figure. Obviously, I'm a huge Flash fan, so I just wanted to um, you know brag brag about that a little bit. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me. So until next time, guys, have a good one.